Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. Amen. Pray that your day is starting out as wonderful and marvelous as you are. Uh, pray that you are going to have just an excellent day today. Let me uh, get some things going here. I always forget to turn my volume down. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing today? Like and share the video. There we go. All right, all right, all right. Getting everything set up here. I'm going to tell y'all I'm going to get going at, at some time uh, after 6, but y'all know how that works. I've been sitting here this whole time like um, I've been sitting here for 10 minutes. Like I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, but I'm, 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 we're here. Good morning, LaCarla. I pray things are going well uh, in the Queen City. Amen. I uh, pray that uh, everything is going well with uh, with with you, with with KK, and with uh, Baby Star, uh, Baby Shark. My bad, Baby Shark. Uh, pray that everything is going well with y'all um, uh, this morning. We we continue to pray for her, and we ask that everybody uh, would continue to pray uh, for La Carla and her family, uh, and that you would continue to donate uh, to her and her family. We found out that the. Uh, just yesterday that the, um that their this first round of medicine uh is gonna take eight weeks eight weeks and like i was telling y'all earlier uh this is a long process uh so that's eight weeks uh before they even get to uh figure out exactly what they need to do uh and then there's time for that also so let's just continue to pray for them and continue to lift them up before the lord we're believing god for a complete healing uh, so let's let's just continue to pray and let's continue to lift them up and let's continue to support them financially. Um, there are a lot of fundraisers. I, I'm not going to say a lot, but there are a few fundraisers going on on uh, on Facebook. You'll see them on Facebook, um, and um, um, and and they. Um, Carla said, "Thank you for your support." And there are a few fundraisers going on on Facebook. Um, I I personally like Cash App. Me myself personally, I like Cash App because. Uh, the money is made available immediately. And so, um, you know, you get it to the person that needs it immediately. And, and this helps them uh, because we never know uh, what they have going on. And you don't want to be sitting around going, you know, I see this money out there, but when is it going to come? Uh, it helps them immediately. And so we that's why I prefer Cash App. You know, you do it whatever way uh, that God leads your heart to do it. But that's just the way that I prefer to do it. Amen. 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 Come on. We're going to get into some stuff today. Can, can we get into some stuff today? Let's get into some stuff today. First, I want to, I want to use, I want to use this scripture and I want to be foundational with this scripture from Luke chapter number 22, verse 31 through 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sip you as wheat. But I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When, 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 and we talked about this before, uh, and we talked about this in this manner that, that, uh, that Satan desires to sift you. And the word sifting means to be agitated from the inside. He, it means to be agitated from the inside. And I'm going to go back over this for just a minute because I'm, I'm telling you right now that, that some of you are in your sifting season, but you're at the end of your sifting season. Can I say that again? You're in your sifting season but you're at the end of your sifting season. And, and, and if you understand how, 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 how for some of us mama and grandmama and them used to put that, that flower in there and they, they, they put it in the sifter and they turn it because they were trying to get the lumps out and, and they, would, they would turn it to get all of the lumps out. And I'm, and I'm trying to tell somebody right now that, that that's the thing. You, it, it seems like, 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 like everything is being turned topsy-turvy and upside down. You, you know how it feels like, because sifting ain't easy. Uh, that, that's good. Sifting ain't easy, but, but you're in there and you're trying to sift the lumps out. You're trying to sift the lumps out because you don't want to put the lumps in whatever it is that you're baking. Because if you put the lumps in there, I, I don't know why. And, and one day I'm going to get somebody who bakes to explain to me why those lumps, they, they won't bake out. In other words, that, that raw, whatever that raw stuff is in there, when you when you go to bite into it, when you get ready to use it, that raw stuff comes out. That's the stuff that has not been processed. And I'm trying to tell you when you 
when you're when you're trying to level up, when you're trying to get to the next place. You can't take all of that stuff with you that has not been worked out. Because if you take that to your next level, when you get there, you're going to mess up your next level. And it's going to seem like you're immature and you're not ready for that level. It's because you didn't go through the sifting process. You didn't go through the sifting process. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But here, here's what Jesus says. Jesus says, I'm not taking you out of the process. Some of y'all have been praying that, that it would be over, that, 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 that you would get out of it. Jesus said, I'm not taking you out of the process. I'm praying that while you're in the process, that your faith don't fail. Come on, get with me today. I'm praying while you're in the process <clears throat> that the only thing that you have to live by, which is your faith, doesn't fail you while you're in the process. I got good news. I got good news. Come on. Some of y'all are in the end of your sifting process. And the reason why I'm telling you you're in the end of your sifting process, watch this. You know this. All hell is breaking out right about now. All hell in your life is breaking out. Everything seems to be going opposite. This is, this is only, this is only the, 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 the testing of your faith, the trying of your faith. Because when, you, when, you, when you're patient, when you're going through this stuff and you're patient, then, then you know that in the end, you'll be wanting nothing. You'll be lacking nothing. Get, get with this. This, this, is what, this is a word that came to me this morning. This is a word that came to me to mo this morning. Are you faithful in your lack? Did y'all get that? Are you faithful in the thing that you want? Or are you faithful in the thing that you don't have? Are you faithful in, in the things that, that you say you want? but you don't have. And I know because when, when it came to me, I was like, come on, God, this is a strange concept. How am I going to be faithful over what I don't have? And see, faith says I act like I have what I don't have. And so God was saying to me, are you faithful over what you don't have? Come on. Some of y'all would want to have a new car. You want a new car. Think about it. Are you faithful over the car that you already have? Come on. Or are you cleaning it? Are you maintaining it? Are you taking care of what you already have? Trying to get what you don't have. Come on. Are you faithful over that thing? Are you are you in that? Are you working it? Because some of y'all are never going to go. Come on. It ain't, some of you are never going to go to the next level if you're not faithful in the level where you are right now. Are you faithful over what you have right now? Don't let your faith fail you. Don't, don't let your faith fail you. 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 And it may seem like right now, it may seem like right now that, that I'm not in here, but I'm telling you right now, I'm still in here because here's the thing I need you to understand. When your faith fails you, your system fails. Come on, sip me some tea on that. When you allow your faith to fail, your whole system fails. What are you saying to us this morning? Here's what I'm saying to you. You ever, like like in a little bit, I'm going to go and get in my car. I'm going to start it up. Go and get in my truck. I'm going to start it up. Listen, a few, and I told y'all this. I, I, I don't know. It's been, I would say about a month ago, my, my battery died. My, my battery died. My battery died. As long as I would hook the jumper cable up to the battery, come on, it got power from another source, which allowed that to start. But I cannot continue to, I couldn't continue to go around with jumper cables relying on somebody else's power to help me run my system. Come on, that was good right there. That almost made me clap. So, so what I had to do was, when, you re when I realized, when I realized for real, for real, I need a new battery. And when I realized it was one night, um, uh, my wife was going to pick up food for us. She was going to pick up food for us. And, and like always, like I tell folk, uh, when I come home at night, I put my phone on my nightstand and it's on silent. So if you call me, I always tell people, leave a message, I'll get back to you. But for the most part, I didn't hear this. So she came back in the door. And I was like, man, she got back fast. And she said, if if somebody was after me, if this was an emergency, you would never respond to my phone call. You you wouldn't respond. And so now what I've learned to do is, it's just a, this is just a sidebar. 
When she leaves the house, I turn my phone on. Okay. When she leaves, I turn my phone on. So that if she calls me, then I'll be able to hear. But here, here's the point. When she got ready to go and get the food, the truck wouldn't start. That made me realize because I care about her, I don't want her out there stuck in a truck that won't start. So I was like, I got to get a new battery. So that night I went and bought a new battery because when my system failed, watch it, but when, when the battery failed, it failed the whole system. Okay, y'all, y'all go, I hope y'all walking with me. When your faith fails you, it fails your whole system. Because the, the battery failed, the truck couldn't operate. Now, other than the battery, there was nothing else wrong with the truck, other than little minor things that happen to cars, but don't shut them down. Because we all have our little things that don't shut us down, but we know we need to deal with them. But watch this. When that one thing failed, when, when that battery failed, it shut down the whole system. When your faith fails you, it shuts down, it, it shuts down your whole system. What, what, are you, what are you saying? What are you saying? It may shut down your family because you don't have faith to believe that y'all could get to the place where you need to be. It may shut down your whole family. Uh, it may shut down your church. It may shut down your organization. It may shut down your neighbor. It may shut down something in your life. Why? Because you don't have the faith to pull everybody else to the next level. I need you to start thinking about this thing. I, this ain't just about you. This is about everybody that's connected to you and everything you're connected to. Say, for instance, if, if, if come on, pastor, if you go in this weekend, you go in, you prepare the word, but your faith has failed you. Somehow your faith has failed you because you've taken your eyes off of God and you start putting your eyes on people. Then you can't get the people to level up. Why? Because your faith is not in God anymore. Your faith is in the people. So when your faith fails you, the whole system is going to fail and the church won't function like it needs to function. It won't operate like it needs to operate. Why? Because my faith has failed me. Come on, let's, let's take a look at this thing then. Because, you know, I know you need scripture. Go to Ephesians chapter number four. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And verse number 16, Ephesians four and 16. Come on, work with me. Work with me. I want to show you. I want to show you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Watch this, Ephesians 4 and 16. 4 and 16, it says, From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply it. Every joint supply it. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you a joint. You are a, not, not one of them things that y'all roll up, not a blunt joint, but you are a joint. Think about this right here. You are a joint. You supplying something. You're supplying something. And when your faith fails you, you can't supply or provide the thing that you need to be providing. Come on, come on. I'm trying to uh, supply according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, part. Make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Make an increase of the body. Think about this. When you are operating in faith the way you need to be operating, there's increase in your system. Did y'all get that? When you are operating, when you are operating the way you're supposed to be operating, you will see increase in your whole entire system. Everybody is about to increase. Everything is about to increase. Everything is about to work. Everything is going to go the way that it's supposed to go. That's why I'm telling you right now, you can't afford to have faith failures. What do you mean by faith failures? The Lord told, told Peter, Peter said, said to Jesus and Luke, I, I'm ready to go with you, Lord. Wherever we got to go, I'm ready. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, look, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. Listen, your faith is going to be under trial. It's going to be under test. It's going to be under fire. You don't know what you have until it's been tried. Try it. You don't know what you have until it's been tried. When they tried to put Saul's, uh, Saul's armor on David, David was like, uh, no. And the reason why David was like, uh, no, David was like, I've never tried this stuff. I, I don't know what this stuff is going to do, but I know what my God will do. I, I know what I did to the lion, I, I mean to the bear. I know what I did to all of this stuff that tried to attack what I was, what I was supposed to be faithful over. I know what I did with that stuff based on who I am and what I have. Come on, somebody. 
He already knew. I know what I could use. I know what I'm supposed to be using. I know who I am. I know based on what I've already been through, I know who I am. My faith has already been tried. Yeah, everybody may look at it and say, those little sheep, those little sheep, those little sheep. But understand this, I'll never be the king if I don't take care of the small things. I'm, uh, you, you're never going to reign the way you think that you're supposed to reign if you won't take care of the small thing. Those sheep represented, listen to this, those sheep were representative of what he would take care of or what he would be responsible for if he took care, if he was faithful over the little things. You, God is not going to put you in charge of his people or put you in charge of something great if you can't take care of the little things. So when he got ready to go and face the thing that would propel him to his next level of blessing, which was Goliath, he was already prepared. He only took what God told him to take. He only did what God told him to do. He said, I can't take this other stuff because if I take this stuff, this stuff has not been tried. Too many of y'all are trying to get to your next level of blessing by doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, trying to mimic and, and do with other people. You have been gifted. You have a gift. Use what God has given unto you because what God gave you is important for the whole body. Use what God gave you. We don't need two hearts in the body. We just need one heart that functions as a heart. Come on, somebody. I, I'm trying to help you in this thing today. We just need the one heart to function properly. We just need the, we don't need two hearts. We need the one heart to function properly. If there's already a heart, find your place. Stop trying to be the heart when there's already a heart. Stop trying to be the senior pastor when there's already a senior pastor. Stop trying to be this when there's already that. Do your part. Do the part because whatever part God has called you to do, that's the part that's going to get you to your next level. And when you're getting to your next level, think about this. When you're doing the part that you're supposed to be doing and you're getting to your next level, think about this. Every, the whole system is going to go up. Everything is going to go up. And every time the whole system goes up, you're prospering with the whole system. You're prospering with the whole system. I'm, I'm about, let, let me sip my tea as I say this. Because here, here is it. This, 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 this is another thing. This is another thing. And I want you to get this. <clears throat> Listen, I, I want to be off of blood pressure medicine. Can anybody else raise their hand? I want to be off blood pressure medicine. Bed, blood pressure medicine. But are you faithful over the things that God has told you to do to get you off of the medication? Come on. Are, are, you, are you faithful? Are you doing the things that you need to do in order for you to be off of the medication? Because when I get off of that medication, watch this. When I'm healed from high blood pressure, the whole system goes up. My whole, my, my whole health picture, the outlook of my whole health picture gets better. Do y'all understand where we're going with this? When you're, when you're, listen, a whole lot of people will do this thing right here. A whole lot of people will do this. A whole lot of, oh my, oh Jesus. You will be faithful over giving your tithe, but you won't be faithful over what God gave you left or, or what's left. You'll be faithful over the tithe, but you're not faithful over what God allowed you to keep. Come on, I'm, 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 I'm saying this to somebody. Uh, I'm somebody somebody's finances need to be improved and, I, and I'm trying to help you right now. You'll be faithful over giving your tithe. You, you're a faithful tither. God bless you. You're a faithful tither. But what you're doing, you're not a good steward over the rest of it. And you, you, you're crying out saying, God, why, why, do, why am I lacking in my finances? Why? Because you're not a good steward over what God has, a, over what you have left. You thought that my obligation to God was just to give my tithe. What, what about right now? What about right now when we're saying to you, when, when, there, when somebody in the body has a need, who, who, has, who has a need, who needs something, who needs financial support, and guess what? This is your seed that's going to guarantee your harvest. Oh, come on, come on. I'm, I'm speaking good now. Are you going to be faithful over what you got left? Because when God requires it of you, do you have it? Okay. Y'all ain't even got the like of love. That, that's just good. Are you going to be faithful over, or have you been faithful enough so that when God requires it, you ain't got to be talking about when I get paid? I like this. I saw this the other day. Some of y'all talking about when you get paid, you're going to try that new Popeye's chicken sandwich. 
baby, if you got to wait till you get paid to buy a chicken sandwich, you got problems. You got problems. You got issues. You need to go back and check your faith walk concerning your finances because there's no way. Okay, let, let me move on. Let's move on. Let's move on because I, I, got, I got one more scripture to go to and my time is short. I, I'm just trying to tell y'all right now. I'm, I'm trying to get this thing to you right now. Your sifting season. I, I said your sifting season is coming to a close. Your sifting season is coming to a close. Why do I know my sifting season is coming to a close? Because I've been faithful. I, I have been, I have been faithful. Come on, God. I've been faithful. I have done what you told me to do. I have, I have done everything that, that's concerning my faith. Everything concerning my faith while God, I've done it. And I know that my sifting season is over, God. I, I've been, I've exercised patience in some areas where, where I know in the past where I've not been patient. I'm telling you right now, this is me. I don't know about you, but, but I've exercised patience in some areas where I've not been patient. There are some things that I would have wanted to do it on my own and make it happen on my own. God told me, don't put my hands to it. I've not put my hands to it. Come on. I've been faithful, God. I, I've done the things that you told me to do. I know I've matured in some areas. Listen, the, the, the areas, and don't, don't come with me. Don't come at me talking about, yeah, but there's still some areas you need to mature in. I'm, I'm acknowledging that, but I'm also telling you the areas that I need to mature in to get to the next level in my life. I've matured in those areas. When I get to that next level, whatever areas I need to mature in, when I get there, that's what I'm going to be doing. But because it, God has established a track record with me that says when I am faithful over the things that God has called me to be faithful over, he will mature me. To, he, will, he, will, he will level me up, get me to the next level. Guess what? Everybody connected to me, everything that's connected to me is going to a higher level. I can say that. Why can't you say that? Because I'm going to faith you to the next level. Come on. What do you mean you're going to faith me to the next level? This is my faith. Yeah, but I'm about to help you grow in your faith. Even in your faith, I'm about to help you grow in your faith. Because the Bible says in Luke chapter number 22, when, 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 I, am, when I have overcome, when I'm to that point, go back and strengthen my brethren. Come on, somebody. This thing just ain't about me. When Peter overcame, Peter was now able to go back and to strengthen everybody else and to help them to overcome. So because God has strengthened me, I'm going to be able to go back and to help my brother. We both going to get through this thing. We're going to fake through this thing because I need you to be there and you need me to be there. I need you to be there and you need me to be there. Oh, come on. I'm getting ready to get down to my last minute. I'm going to share with you what God shared with me yesterday uh, about, you know, about the end of this sifting process. But I, I got to get to this part right here. Go to James chapter number one. James chapter number one. Uh, I'm going to start at verse number two. My brother, encounter it all joy when you fall into divers or different kind of temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Come on. Let patience have her perfect work. That at the end of this thing, you'll be entire and wanting nothing. Come on. That, that's good news for somebody. That's good news for somebody. That is good news for somebody. That when you get through, when God gets to working this thing out, when, when, you, when you're patient... As God is working this thing out, listen, don't jump out of the process. I'm telling somebody right now, don't jump out of the process. I know the sifting. I know it seems like things being turned upside down. But watch this. <laughs> the flower that, I, that gets sifted goes into, is part of the overall ingredients that's going to make the cake. Come on. It goes in part of, it, it's a part of the overall ingredients that's going to make the cake. The only thing that don't make the that don't make the cut are the lumps that don't want to be sifted. Come on, I just blessed somebody. The only thing that don't want to make the cut that don't make the cut don't, don't that do not be get to be a part of the overall big picture are the ones that don't want to be sifted. And you can't keep on jumping out of the sifting process. You can't keep on taking yourself out of the process. You got to stay in the process. And let God work it out. 
because you want to be a part of the overall big picture. There's something that you're supplying to the whole cake. The flour ain't the only ingredient in the cake, but the flour is necessary to make the cake. Did y'all get that? Because you want to add some eggs. I don't know much about baking, so I might get off, uh, might get off track with a couple of things. You're going to have to add some eggs. I think maybe some butter and, you know, some sugar. It, it's some other stuff that's some, some oil or something. It's some other stuff that's going to go in there. So you got to go through your process in order that you might make the whole thing better. Did y'all get that? You got to go through your process in order that the whole thing might be better. Go through what you got to go through to make the whole thing better. Go through what the whole thing gets better when you allow, stop getting out of the process. Because every time you get out of the process, that don't mean that the cake ain't going to get baked simply because you didn't want to be a part of it. Because there's other flour in the bag. Come on. There's other flour in the bag. But you want to be a part of it because you want to be a part of something greater. You want to be a part of something greater. And here was the word of the Lord to me yesterday. Oh, I was sitting there and I almost jumped out of my chair and started running. I'm not one of those people. I'm not going to come. I don't, I don't walk in my church and be like, you know, everything. God told me everything's about to turn up rosy. That, that's not me. I only say for the people who are doing what God told them to do, that everything in your life is about to get better. Can I say it to you like that right there? Everything in your life is about to get better. Come on, you can go and shout better. I've, I've been saying these things. I've been, I, I've been as God has been giving me these things, I've been sharing them with you. And I'm telling you right now, I have seen my life get better. I, don't, I, I, I didn't say bitter. I've seen my life get better. And I'm trying to share with you what God is always sharing with me. And, and the vision that God gave me yesterday for, for not only my life, but for, for anybody's life. God said for anybody that will walk in faith, listen, your life is about to go to places where you never even imagine your life going. Anybody that will walk in faith. Uh, oh my God, I, I, I got to give you this one more. I got to go to 1 Kings chapter number 8, verse number 39. Uh, I'm going to ask my wife to post that just in case um, I, don't, I don't get to it. Listen, uh, I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about your life. Your life is about to go to a level uh, like you have never seen before based on your faith, based on your faith. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth to show, looking for somebody he can show himself strong to. Are you that person that God is looking, but God is only looking for a perfect heart? Come on. What's a perfect heart? What's a perfect heart? A perfect heart is simply uh, my motives are correct. My motives are right. Uh, listen, man, this thing right here is so good. Listen, the, and, and I was saying that me and God had this conversation because I was like, God, it looks like everything is going so opposite in my life. Listen, and then that song came on. <clears throat> that song came on. What's that song? Lord, you're good. Uh, you've been better than good. That, that song came on in the, in the first part of that came on where the man said he was sitting there, he was, he was, he was over his dishes and, and he was thinking about all his responsibilities and it seemed like everything in his life was going wrong. But then that song came to him and said, Lord, you, you're so good. You've been so good. You've been better than good. Come on. God has been better than good. And I'm sitting there and God was like, God, as that song was playing, God was like, I want you, I want to show you how I've been better than good. And God was showing me how he had been better than good and how he is better than good. And I'm trying to get somebody encouraged in this thing today. Listen, and, and I got and, and I always I always like to add these caveats because these come from the word. Listen, this is first King 8 and 39. This is Solomon praying. Solomon says, Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even now only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. If your heart has been right before God, if your heart is right before God, if you're living by faith, if you're living by faith, get ready for the outpour. Get ready for the outpour. Don't give up. Get ready for the outpour. Get ready for the outpour. Get ready for the outpour. And this is funny. This just came back to my remembrance. I forgot to tell my wife about it. So this is the first time she's hearing it too because I forgot to tell her. Uh, yesterday, while I'm going through all of this, my lawyer called me yesterday 
uh, there, there was there, my VA lawyer called me and there was there's a case I have before VA. And he said to me, he said, he said, I know they settled this case at this amount. He said, I know they settled it at this amount. He said, but but if you disagree with it now, we can go back. We can go back. We can file an appeal because because they may have used the wrong date. And they may have paid you and not paid you everything that they owe you. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody right now. Everything that belongs to you, God says it's coming to your house. There are some things that you don't even know about that God is about to put you on somebody's heart. He's about to put your name is about to enter in rooms. I, I, I like this. I, I, I wasn't this. I, I'm not the originator of this phrase, but your name is about to enter rooms where you've never been. Your name is about to come before people with, 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 with wealth, influence, might, and ability. We call that favor. Your name is about to go places where you've never been. And I'm just telling you right now, you need to get yourself ready. Make sure that everything, every move you make is a faith move. The Bible declares that anything that is not a faith is a sin. I'm telling you right now, make sure that you're walking in faith, by faith. Make sure everything you do is about faith. And watch the outpouring that God is about to pour into your life. Watch how God is about to pour these things into your life. And watch how your life is about to go to the next level. Because everything that belongs to you is coming to you. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. It is coming to you. Everything is coming to you. I don't know what God has showed you. I, I, I know what God showed me. I don't know what God has shown you. But you need, to, you need to get established in that thing. You need to believe it. You need to believe that God is going to do it. Don't let your faith fail you. Stop jumping out of the process. You're, you're at the end of the sifting process. Don't jump out right now. Let God smooth out that last little lump. Let him get out that last little lump. And go and get him be a part of the whole process. Because when you get to come up, everybody connected to you comes up with you. Everything in your circle comes up. Your faith is not just about you. It is about everybody connected to you. And when you get in faith, everything connected to you and everything in your circle goes up to the next level. And I'm telling you right now, that's why you need to make sure you're connected to the right people. Make sure you're walking in the right circles. If your circle, if your connections and your circle ain't about faith, you need to find your connection in a circle that's about faith. Don't let nobody pull you off the wall. Stay in faith. God bless you. Listen, I, I keep on telling y'all, and I'm waiting on for some of y'all to come back because I know God has been doing good stuff in your life. Next Friday, I'm going to need for y'all to come back and testify in the comment section. I'm going to need you to come back and testify in the comment section about what God did for you and about what, and about what God is doing for you because I know he's doing it. I know he's doing it. Uh, Y'all be blessed. You have a great day. May the blessings of the Lord never depart from you. May his presence never leave you. And may you never depart from him. And may you never leave his presence. Listen, I got this last thing. I got to say this. Um, this Sunday is, you know how you always been talking about you're going to get back in church? This Sunday is, I'm going to get back in church Sunday. Go to your local house of worship. Go to the place where you worship. I need you to get back in church this Sunday. I'm expecting every chair at Eastgate to be full. Invite somebody to come to church with you who doesn't have a church home. Those people that have a church home that you know, get them back in church. Tell them to go back to their house of worship. Tell them to go back to their church this Sunday. Don't stay out of church this Sunday. I need for you to be in the house, especially if you go to Eastgate, because there's a word in Eastgate this weekend that's going to bless you like never before. And I need you there to receive it. I need you there to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you.